Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 in the wake of my recent videos with the AJ-260 on the Saturn 1B and the Space Shuttle. People have given suggestions and so I will broach, uh, well, two of them in combination. Uh, one suggestion was from Eric Popcorn saying that we should use the AJ-260s on an SRBX configuration. Now the SRBX was basically the Ares-1 rocket, which had a Hydrolox upper stage, and then one of the five-segment boosters that are used on SLS as the core, and then slap two more of the five-segment boosters on the side of it, or it could be the four-segment boosters either way. Uh, but we're replacing them with the AJ-260s anyway, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, this created an ungainly, really long rocket because the upper stage would have to be something like, uh, you know, six meters in diameter, seven meters in diameter, something like that. Uh, whereas the boosters there were 3.7 meters in diameter. So really thin first stage plus boosters and then uh, and again, the upper stage just like Ares 1. Uh, but when we use the AJ-260s, which are thicker boosters, well, uh, it turns out more like this. Uh, so it actually looks sort of normal. Now the upper stage we have here is actually the New Glenn upper stage. And that's because Pekka suggested uh, replacing the first stage of New Glenn with the AJ-260. Now, just doing that with one won't work. It'll actually have horrible performance compared to the normal New Glenn. Now, you could use it. Uh, overall, it would get better performance than the Saturn 1B, and that's because the upper stage of New Glenn will be a little bit more efficient, have a little bit more thrust, and is a little bit larger than the Saturn 1B upper stage, the S4B stage, but, uh, you know, there's inefficiency down here compared to the normal New Glenn uh, core, obviously. And it doesn't produce as much thrust as, well, mm, it depends on the point of flight, but anyway, it doesn't produce as much total impulse as the New Glenn stage, so, yeah. Uh, one of them doesn't work out very well. It probably gets you about 30 tons to orbit. It's not much of a question mark really. Uh, but this way, this way, with uh, two extra boosters, sort of combining Eric Popcorn's idea and Pekka's idea, we get an interesting rocket. It's a little bit less than a Saturn V in the mass, about the same as an SLS, and I think it can get 70 tons to orbit. So we have 70 tons here. And that is what we're going to try out. Now it's a little bit hard, here it's a little bit hard to figure out what's going to happen. Uh, with the single stick it was easy after we did the Saturn 1B test to figure out what might happen with that because we can compare it to the Saturn 1B. So we have baseline there. But here um, we are lighting the core in flight. Now this looks like we can't do that, right? 1.06 it says here, but it always messes up with the SRB thrust to weight ratio. So, we were expecting more than that. Uh, these uh, combined produce uh, 40,000 kilonewtons, which should be more than enough to lift the rocket. And I just uh, took them off of the space shuttle, so they're going to separate in a slightly odd way, but it should be fine. Uh, so I'm thinking that 9,400 will be enough to get 70 tons to orbit, but we should check. So let's see, make sure that staging is right. And actually, we'll be lighting that first and then separating the other two. Okay, so this is SRBNG uh, for New Glenn, but also I'm uh, joking a little bit here. NG in Japanese entertainment would be not good, uh, as in not acceptable. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, uh, here we go. Okay, we are at Tampico because I think it's better for me to test such things at Tampico. <laughs> but it's sort of oriented wrong. If you take a look at the frame, uh, frame, flame trench, we should probably be oriented the other way, um, 90 degrees off, but we'll just take it for now. All right, um, I don't know, it, it decides sometimes to read my physical throttle and other times not, it's confusing. But okay, here we go. It's just an or orbital test of 70 tons and launch. Well, not as much thrust weight ratio as my, I might have wanted, but it's going up. Should be interesting. 
not your normal SRB launch, right? The upper stage does need some time. It's a seven minute stage and it's going to have a heavy payload. Uh, we're accelerating very gently right now. <laughs> uh, barely at all. We might want to uh, light the... We'll wait until through max Q, but we might want to light that core a little bit early. I guess it's not too bad right now. There's... They should be able to control roll like this, because there's two of them. But when there's only one, they can't control roll for that period of time. Now, I have no idea what the thrust curve on the AJ-260 actually was, so that's another little thing. But let's light the core. And, yeah, separate. Oh, it wasn't too weird. Okay. Might need to go steeper initially. No, this is really high thrust to weight ratio. Well, now it's building some TWR there. Okay, that's a tail off. We'll separate the fairings first. And then staging and ignition. Alright, two BE-3Us. Now we have to keep in mind, I might be optimistic with the performance here. This was way back when, and I was thinking that they would be decent Hydrolox engines with 400, uh, 446 seconds of specific impulse. The thrust 700 kilonewtons should be fine, but I have reason to believe based on the lunar mass capabilities of New Glenn that they are actually not that efficient. So, they're probably closer to J2 levels than this. So, the real thing, if we actually wanted to do this, would probably not get uh, this payload mass, unless they, you know, improve the engines a bit. Now, they've delivered uh, BE-4s to the um, to United Launch Alliance for the Vulcan rocket. So, I, I, I haven't heard anything about the BE-3Us at all. Now, they're very different from the BE-3s that they use on New Shepard, so... I don't know if these are fully developed engines, whether they're still working on it, whether, whether it's actually the hang-up for the New Glenn rocket, I don't know. So, if somebody knows about them, uh, feel free to tell me, especially their specific impulse, of course. That is the number in question. I mean, Delta V-wise, right now, we have enough. The question is whether we might need to waste some of it in order to keep our time to apoapsis so that we don't hit the atmosphere again. Okay, overflying Cuba, don't tell anyone. Okay, still looking good, but very tight. I think this is probably going to be it. It is going to be 70 tons. Okay, well, a little bit lopsided, 77 meters per second. There's still residuals. Uh, it doesn't say right now, but I had seen 1% residuals. Um, yeah, it says on the engine 1.15% residuals. I keep clicking on the tank, but it's actually the engine that has the residuals amount. Uh, but we are in orbit. We've got just a little bit left. So I think 70 tons is basically what we're looking at here. Uh, I suppose the question is, because I, I mean, we've done one test and we've got our answer, but could we use a bigger upper stage for this? And maybe that would be more worthwhile? If maybe we light all three SRBs at the same time? That, that is my question. So there's really only one bigger upper stage that I can think of that would be sufficiently different. So let's see about that. And so we have this, putting the S2 stage on top of the three AJ-260s and lighting all three at once. So we, we really aren't going to decouple them. I've disabled the coupler staging and I've taken off the separatrons. We're using separatrons only on here, retro rockets. 
and appropriately they are the uh, S2 retro rockets uh, but uh, they're gonna be pulling this away and then our engines are actually the J2S's the upgraded version of the J2 not to be confused with the J2X uh, they get 436 seconds ISP as opposed to J2's uh, 242.5 there and so yeah just a, a mild upgrade to improve performance and I don't know exactly what kind of delta V we need to get our payload to orbit with this kind of thrust weight ratio but I'm going with 9400 right now and our payload is basically 95 tons so not bad if we can swing it uh, let us see if it works now you might think of them putting the S4B on top of this with Apollo and uh, and all that business uh, that probably won't work because even as it is it's really hard to get the uh, S4B stage to orbit with the regular Saturn V and still have it have enough delta V in order to get to the moon so and 95 tons isn't the capacity of Saturn V I mean this is falling way short and Saturn V actually gets more thrust than these three SRBs so uh, and more efficiency of course too so it's not going to possibly be a replacement for Saturn V for the regular Apollo missions but 95 tons is not bad, so let's see how it goes. And then you'll think of putting the four boosters, won't you? <laughs> so, well, that's, a, that's another thing. Um, I I'll leave that to the viewer. We'll just try this for now, okay? Uh, because I intend to title this particular video the AJ-260 Heavy Edition, or something like that. Uh, so... We'll leave it as a three core version. Now, uh, the reason there's a little bit of a separation there is I put the S4 instrument unit in there. So we, we have the instrument unit as proper. Uh, it's just sort of tucked in a bit. So I would imagine it would be built into the payload adapter anyway. So, okay, it's a very stout looking rocket. It's a very Kerbal looking rocket, you have to admit. Uh, this is a very Kerbal looking rocket right now. SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. It's certainly getting more thrust weight ratio than it was reading, but we need it. We need that thrust weight ratio. But the stage time of the S2 is less than the New Glenn upper stage, so that's good. Not an ideal trajectory, we've got too much deviance from the prograde vector. Okay, separation... Uh, are we ready? Okay, separation. Oh no, it blew everything up. <laughs> hmm... Well, maybe this fairing... Uh, maybe we should have the fairing separate or something. Okay. Or maybe... Hmm... Maybe the center node doesn't like that? Because we're using the center node inside the tank, inside the S2 tank, that the normal inner stage for Saturn V would use, but maybe that doesn't like the procedural fairings much. I think we should just attach to the bottom node of the J2 instead. Okay, there you go, SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. Alright, off we go. It still killed it. It still killed it. Uh, uh, I like the way the fairing looks because it fits with the, but maybe we should use multiple fairings. But then if we use too many, uh, if we use four fairings, it's got to bump into the nose cone, right? But okay. Okay, we'll try that and hopefully that'll be better. But yeah, it's causing problems. Okay, SAS on, throttle is up. Once more with feeling again. <laughs> Ignition and launch. Third time's the charm. Maybe that's a better way of putting it. Alright, will it work? Some of them before others, but all right, all right. Ignition, bearing set, 
It'd be funny if the ferryings killed us now right there. Alright, we are on our way still. Delta V is fine for now, but we still need to gain altitude and everything. Okay, I think we're gonna get to orbit with extra. We'll see how much extra and then adjust the payload accordingly. Okay, 262 by 180. We have 431 meters per second left. So let's see what we, let's say we use 400 more because it'll reduce the thrust weight ratio a bit too and see what that gets us. So right now it says the total is, well, let's take one fairing off since I'm going, well, both, both fairings off. So right now it says 9,411. It's apparently we can go with 9,000. So uh, let's see what that gets us. 109.4 let's say I mean that's 400 less now and so 112 tons well let's launch it one more time SAS on throttle is up and launch separation and ignition occurring separation well our landscape has already gone we're past the distance limit okay it's pretty tight I think it might be just a little bit short let's see Well, uh, if we had RCS on this stage, it'd finish it off. Uh, it might be a little bit of a trajectory thing. We can see that we still have some vertical speed here in the apoapsis. It's sort of lopsided. If we pitched down just a little bit more, I only did minus one. If we were like minus two, it would have made it. We do have little residuals there, uh, but not that much. And so, yeah, uh, so conceivably 112 tons, I think with a better trajectory, we could manage that. And that'll wrap it up. So that's what you can get with three AJ-260s plus the S2 stage. So 70 tons with the New Glenn upper stage and 112 tons with this. And not that I'm suggesting you do this. All right. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.